Hi there, it's Jeff here with a video looking at merit and demerit goods, part of our revision of market failure. So first of all, what is a merit good? Well, a merit good is a good or a service that governments often feel that people will tend to under-consume, and as a result, there might be a case for intervention, such as a subsidy or making the product available free at the point of use. Now, there's two aspects to merit goods. One is information failure. So people may not act in their own interest fully because they don't have fully understand or calibrate the true private benefits of consumption. Uh, but also externalities. Uh, consumption of merit goods can lead to positive externalities where the social benefit exceeds the private benefit. Now, merit goods are different to public goods. So merit goods typically are rival and excludable, whereas public goods are non-rival and non-excludable. Education and healthcare are often seen as examples of merit goods. People get a benefit, a private benefit from education, but there's a wider external benefit as well. Contribution to society through higher productivity in the labour market, perhaps more social cohesion. Vaccinations as a merit good. When people get vaccinated, they protect themselves. They get a benefit from a disease, but they also contribute to herd immunity, which reduces the risk of disease transmission within the community. Clean energy can perhaps be seen as a merit good. Uh, from solar to wind power, uh, cutting carbon emissions, uh, benefiting society in terms of reduced environmental damage and the, the pathway towards net zero. I cry a little every time I hear that a library is closed locally. So individuals benefit from using libraries, but there's also a much wider social benefit in terms of contributing to a more literate and informed society providing a space often for community action and community engagement. So there's often a very strong merit, good aspect to the provision of public libraries and other community spaces, community um, opportunities. Now, one of the issues with merit goods is that people tend to under-consume merit goods because they only think about their own private costs and benefits, in which case you'd have a private optimum here of Q1, whereas... If the consumption of merit goods leads to positive externalities, external benefits, then marginal social benefit will be above marginal private benefit. So the optimum output becomes Q2 rather than Q1. And the underconsumption of a merit good, of course, is a cause of market failure, leading to a net loss of social welfare. Healthcare. Interesting spending here. Now, I was trying to find a data on per capita spending, but this is total healthcare spending in the UK in billions of pounds all the way since the start of 2000. And you can see the surge in healthcare spending. Lots of factors driving that increasing population, increased incidence of chronic disease, an aging population as well. But obviously, the big rise in healthcare spending in 2020 and again in 2021 uh, as a result of the COVID pandemic. Demerit goods. Now, demerit goods typically a category of good that are believed, perceived to have negative externalities or adverse effects on society, or where the effects are not fully recognised by the people consuming the goods. So, again, demerit goods involve an information failure aspect as well as an externality aspect. And as a result, in the absence of government intervention, people may tend to over-consume or excessively consume demerit goods, leading to suboptimal outcomes for society. I was just trying to think of examples in the news at the moment. High caffeine energy drinks, perhaps. High fat, high sugar, high salt foods. Uh, violent people's addiction to violent films and games. Hands-free cell phones in vehicles. Uh, binge drinking, tobacco. There's loads of examples of where there's a potentially strong demerit aspect. But critically, and this is really important for the exam, the concept of a demerit good, what, what we think is a demerit good, does involve making a value judgment. We can't, we can't avoid this about what we think is harmful or detrimental, both to individuals and to the wider society. So these judgments about demerit goods are typically based on social norms and also ethical considerations, and they, they involve value judgments. So is, you know, is tobacco a demerit good? Well, most people probably would say yes, but it does require valid judgment that smoking is harmful to health. And again, the design of government interventions, government policies, be it indirect taxes, regulations, public health campaigns, behavioural nudges, all of those policy interventions involve valid judgments about what's most effective. Does it work? 
and what's most equitable, what's fairest in terms of achieving the desired outcomes whilst respecting people's freedom to choose. So information failure, key aspect, I think, of demerit goods. People may not be aware of the long term benefits, for example, of educational vaccinations. Uh, I suppose, especially with merit goods, producers of demerit goods might be using heavy spending of misleading advertising, uh, often emphasising immediate gratification, and we see a sense of behavioural bias there. So consumers can underestimate the harm they cause and overconsume them. And of course, the addictive properties of uh, demerit goods. Consumers may not fully grasp the long term health consequences once they start. The actual prevalence of smoking in the UK has fallen in the last 20 or 25 years. You can see that the population share of smokers has fallen from about 37% down to under 15%, which I suppose is good news. Better educated population. Uh, interestingly, the a cigarette share of households spend by income group does vary. Highest amongst the poorest families, 1.2% share of spending, um, down to 0.3% for the richest two deciles there. On average, households spend about 0.5% or did in 2018 on their cigarettes. E-cigarette use, of course, has gone up. Favourite exam topic perhaps here, the rise of e-cigarette use. Now, are e-cigarettes or vapes a demerit good? Well, on the one hand, there are private costs, the cost of buying the packs or the nicotine cartridges. There are external costs, so vapour can be dangerous. People argue that uh, e-cigarettes could be a gateway for young people to, to smoke. Arguments on both sides. On the other hand, uh, there's a utility from nicotine hit, less social isolation, but critically, e-cigarettes may help smokers to quit traditional cigarettes, which brings about reduced health costs for society. So, demerit goods, the welfare diagram. Uh, obviously, if we think there are negative externalities from consumption, um, then the benefits to society are less than the benefits to the individual. So, therefore, social benefit lies below private benefit. As a result, there's overconsumption relative to where we'd want to be. We'd prefer to be A, we end up at C. So there's a welfare loss of A, B, C. There we go. That was our updated revision video covering merit and demo goods.